How's it going everybody? So I'm gonna be taking a break from my mill project for a little while because I need a new drill press. The one that I've been working with for the last couple of days has been absolutely atrocious and to tell you the truth, it's more than a decade old and it's a simple, cheap, I think it's a $100, no, I spent $80 on this at Menards about a decade ago and I am done with it. I'm over it, it's done, I, I, I don't think I can throw it away but it needs to go in the trash. So what I did is I went out and I bought a new drill press and these ones, believe it or not, from Harbor Freight actually come highly recommended. People who use them seem to really like them. Now what I have here is the 13 inch. There's also a 17 inch and a 20 inch if you're looking at the floor standing models. And if you're more of a metal worker or a machinist, you should be looking at the 17 or the 20. The 13 inch is the biggest one they have that's geared more towards woodworkers and that sort of thing. It doesn't mean a machinist can't get by with one of these, but you'd be better off buying one of those if you're looking at drilling metal. And so today what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing everything that comes in one of these boxes. I'm gonna be showing how to install and set up the drill press and I'm gonna be giving a couple of first thoughts about the drill press once it's up and running. So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. Everything was really well packaged and there were no damages. I have no doubt that if you were gonna get this shipped to you that it should arrive to you with zero damage. And I do deliver packages for a living by the way, so I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, this is really well packaged. I love opening new tools. This was everything that came inside the box. If you get everything you're supposed to, you're supposed to get the column with the lifting mechanism, three feed handles, the table, there's an assortment of adjustment screws and bolts, the chuck with the chuck key, and the foot and the head of the drill press. Now they do give you two Allen wrenches to put this thing together, and it's a 3mm and a 4mm. However, if you're planning on doing anything else, like modifying it, you're also going to need a 5mm. I ended up grabbing my own. Unfortunately, these nice ones don't come in the box. <laughs> the first thing the instructions tell you to do is to take off the collar and the rack and lifting mechanism off the column. None of this comes pre-greased, so you're going to have to grease it yourself. It did come with a bunch of oil all over it, so I'm not, I'm not really worried about seizing or anything, but they expect you to reach inside this piece here, and you have to grease up this helical gear and the worm gear that drives everything. You really don't want to skip this step because you don't want to wear metal on metal. I kind of wish this had been done in the factory. And then when you put everything together, you have to make sure that this rack gear meshes with the helical gear on the inside, otherwise it won't go together. And then this collar slides right over the top of the column and meshes with the rack gear, and it's just held in place by this set screw. And then we can install this locking handle in the back. Now, even though this is the same design as a lot of other drill presses, this one actually felt much more secure than most of the ones I've used. However, this is also where you can see I put this lifting mechanism upside down. The bolt for the tilting mechanism needs to be on the bottom. The instructions say to put the table on next, but the foot isn't even on yet, so I went and did the foot instead. And it's really important that you only use hand tools on this so you don't cross-thread the piece. You don't want to get lazy and start using power tools because you could cross-thread things. Either way, this worked very well. It feels very secure. Now it's time to put the head on, and one of the things I noticed that was very interesting was that the set screw is a lot smaller than the thickness of the metal that holds the head to the column. When I first put it on, I thought I maybe had missed where it was supposed to attach to, but it's correct. It just happens to recess really far into that hole. It's still holding all of its threads, so I'm not really worried about it. Now, even though this is on the small end of the floor standing drill presses, I actually found this thing to be pretty heavy and a little bit difficult to take off my workbench. Oh, where are you spinning? The instructions never actually tell you when to place the thing on the floor. It just tells you to put the foot on, then it tells you to put the head on. I think you're supposed to put the head on after you put the the whole thing on the floor and that would make this so much easier and as soon as I got it on the floor I found the first thing that I really did not like about this drill press okay it's a bit top heavy so if you're thinking about buying this you have to make sure you either bolt this thing to the floor or make some sort of a heavy foot for it it's up to you how you want to solve the problem but it does need to be solved and then i can start assembling the table starting with this crank so when i was at harbor freight looking at the floor model this thing worked very nicely and you can see now it's a little fiddly i think on the floor model they must have greased this very well so i'm going to go ahead and grease this up kind of buff it out a little bit 
and then see if this crank mechanism works as well as it did at the store. I'm just using this simple all-purpose grease on everything that it's telling me to grease, and like I said, it didn't tell me to grease the rack here, but I decided to do it anyway, and that actually did drastically solve the problem. It's ten times better once you grease this. The raise and lower mechanism is one way this can move. You can also move it left and right. And the table can also spin left and right. And it can be locked down pretty easily with one of these. However, it also has this fourth way it can move. And this is the part that I don't like. Um, it can tilt left and right, which I do use from time to time with my other drill press. However, check this out. To move the head left and right in this orientation, the only thing that I have that will fit on here is a 15 16 socket. Now in my shop, I don't even have a ratchet that fits this socket. I don't know where it came from, but it's the only one I have, it's 15 16 uh, A deep socket does not fit in there because it runs into this, and wrenches don't fit into there very easily because it runs into the walls there. So the only thing that's gonna be able to turn this side to side is a 15 16 regular size socket. So I'm going to have to get some sort of a driver for this just so I can use the tilt mechanism because it, as far as I can tell, this did not come with a tool. If I'm mistaken, I'll correct it here in like three seconds because I'm going to go look for that tool. But if I don't find a tool in there, I'm going to be annoyed. I never did find that tool, so it looks like I'm going to be buying a ratchet just so I can use the tilt on this table, which I'm kind of annoyed about. However, all of the other adjustments on this table work very well. And then I can start installing the feed handles. I do really like the way these are designed, it's very simple and they definitely work better than my old drill press, but I really don't like how easily they come loose. Of course these screw directly into the quill, but the grips also screw into these handles as well. And during this initial assembly I wasn't able to get them fully tight, they never really seem to fully tighten. The next thing the instructions tell you to install is the chuck, and the way they tell you to do it is interesting, I've never seen this before. I've always just tapped this with some sort of a mallet, but they tell you to put it in place and then just cram it down on a piece of wood to set it into the chuck. And it worked perfectly. This chuck really is one of the high points of the drill. It works very well. And then I need to put this knob on the pulley cover, and I really didn't like the way this thing was designed. It feels very cheap, and it doesn't actually hold the top closed. I tried bending it with some pliers a handful of times, seeing if I can get it to work any better, but it just doesn't. Uh, it has to be modified if you want it to work, but it's really not that big of a deal, because all it does is cover the pulleys. Okay, now this lever I like, because oops, all this does is pull the motor back to pull against your belt. So once you get the proper belt setting, you can go ahead and lock it down, and it's nice and tight. So let's say I want to... Whoops. There we go. I'm not really sure what all these belt settings do yet, but let's say you want to go to that belt setting. You pull this back and you lock it down, and now the belt is going to run at that pulley ratio. All right, I want to run around half speed, so let's do 1600. I'm going to go ahead and set it to that, and that'll be a pretty good baseline. So that right there is about half speed, so I'm going to lock it down there, and I uh, can always move it around from there. I really like that they have this sticker on top. It's that way you don't lose it. You don't have to go for the manual every time. So that's kind of cool. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a test cut and I'm gonna really put this thing through its paces. This bit is incredibly dull. I've never sharpened this one. And my other drill press hates it. You know what, I think this does have a little bit more travel than my other press, so that's cool. Okay, that legitimately has more power than my other press. Okay, that's promising. That's a lot better than I thought. I'm actually gonna need to get a clamp. Jeez, I'm crow. Well, didn't quite draw through it because I didn't set it proper. Okay, but that's that's not the machine, that's me. So Okay, I was actually thinking about returning this until I saw that. That was very nice. This, it's not just that it was faster. This bit is dull. I have a duller bit. Hold on. You know what I don't like? I don't like that there's nowhere to put the chuck on this. My other drill press has a spot for the chuck, so I'm going to have to put one on there. And to tell you the truth, I'm also 
Gonna have to fix that crap because I don't like that. So this is a two and an eighth drill bit. It's a Forstner bit. A drill press should be able to handle a Forstner bit. Where's that chuck key? You've gotta be kidding me. This is, I need a spot for a chuck key. It's all the way over here. Yeah, I need a spot for the chuck key, okay? Interesting. Um, that's the motor bogging down. So it's not wanting to power through that, so. Not only is this one of the biggest bits that I own, it's also one of the dullest. <laughs> what I ended up doing to fix this was running it down to, I think it was about 800 RPM instead, and that worked so much better. All right, I think that is more than adequate. It's definitely better than my old press. To tell you the truth, there's a lot of cheap things on this press that I don't like. I don't like that it wobbles, so I'm going to be doing a thing here in a second to fix that. I don't like that these don't already have some sort of Loctite on them. I'm going to be Loctiting that in a second. Um, I don't like how chintzy this thing is. It doesn't actually hold the drill press there, so if it ever gets bumped, this is going to fly open, possibly while running. I don't like that. Um, I do like the motor mechanism as far as the tensioner. I do like how much travel is on this. It's more than my previous press, so that's fine. Uh, this is pretty standard. All right, so it's really easy to push past that lock. Um, if you're planning on using the depth stop, phew, buy a different press. Uh, I don't use my depth stop very often, so I'm not going to worry about it. On my other press, I actually replaced that with something different, but if you want to tighten this down enough to where it will stop you, you're going to end up breaking this plastic piece. It, it will snap off. I can feel it. So, um, I, love the, I love this. This is much better than my old press. This is fantastic. I like that. I like the power that I get. I like the torque that I get, and I like all of the different options that I get with the three pulleys. Whether the, you know, a, a lot of cheaper drill presses will cheap out and they'll just do a two pulley system. Uh, this one has three pulleys, so it does give you more options. I think it's fine. Um, let's go ahead and make a few adjustments on this, and uh, we'll call it a day. The first thing I decided to do is to Loctite all these threads, and can you tell I don't oh, use Loctite geez. very often? <laughs> I, you don't have to squeeze these things very hard, my goodness. You just need a drop. I also added Loctite into all of the grips as well. The next thing I decided to change was the table. Now, I really like to be able to clamp things down to my table, so I want it to be a little bit wider and have room for clamps to fit. This one is really just more about preference than anything else. This isn't necessary. I had to use these little clamping blocks to fasten it to the bottom of the table because I didn't really want to drill any holes in the table and there's already these elongated holes in the bottom that I think are for bolts. I'm not really sure why they designed it that way. I wish they would put screw holes in the bottom of these things. Now I'm used to my drill press being a lot higher than this and so I decided just to put a heavy base on the bottom of the foot. I thought I was going to be able to do this with it still attached and so I tried to figure out where all my bolt holes were so I could put them through some of this hardwood but I ended up having to take it off and do it over my workbench. The facets on the inside of the foot are very irregular, so it was really difficult to get this bolted on properly. I really think this is just designed to be bolted to a floor. Making a foot for it was a little bit difficult, so if anyone else is going to do this, just get some 3 quarter inch plywood and make your box out of that. That would have simplified all of this. I just threw together a quick box of what I think is 3 quarter inch plywood. I'm not really sure what this is. This is more than a decade old wood that I found in my scrap pile and I could just glue, tack, and screw this into place. And I want this to be as heavy as possible, so I filled it with sand, but I didn't have enough sand to fill it up completely, so I added these weights as well. Future Dylan, if you're looking for these, they're, they're in the box.
The next thing I needed to make was somewhere to put the chuck key. So I was able to drill a hole in this piece at a slight angle, and this is just slightly wider than the shaft of the chuck key. I also had to drill holes for the mounting bolt. There's actually a decent amount of room inside this housing, so I really wasn't worried too much about hitting these wires, but you do have to be a bit careful. And then I could just bolt it right into place. And then after I screw the switch back together, I could chamfer the front end, and this just makes it easier for the chuck key to slip in. And it actually works really well. I would highly recommend this upgrade, even if you have a spot for your chuck key. And now I had to find room for this big thing. I'm going to be replacing my old drill press here, and it turns out I don't know how to throw away tools that still technically work, and so this is just going to find a new home over in my metalworking area in the other side of the shop. And that table is actually going to be repurposed for my scroll saw, which I've been needing a scroll saw table for a long time, so this is going to work out really well. Okay, the last thing that I want to check is the run out. Yeah, my hand pushing on it does more deflection than the actual run out. Okay, so that's about two thousandths. That's not terrible. And just for fun, comparing that with my old drill press, which I know. <laughs> which I knew there was an issue. I just never measured it. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Upgrade, well worth it. To tell you the truth, I was really considering returning this until I turned it on. Not only is it accurate, but it has a lot of torque behind it. I thought my old drill press was a three quarter horse and I'm starting to think it's probably less than that now. It doesn't actually say what it is on it, but this one has a three quarter horsepower induction motor and being able to change all of the belts to all the different configurations, uh, it's, it's gonna be very nice in my shop. So I personally am really glad that I bought this. Now, who is this drill press for? Is it for a machinist or a metal worker? I would say no. If you're a machinist or a metal worker, you should be looking at the 17 or the 20. Those are geared more towards you. But if you are a woodworker, I would argue that this one actually is one of the best you can get. You could still go to the 17 or the 20 and do just fine, but as far as point of diminishing return, I would argue for a woodworker, this is probably one of the best that you can get. That being said, there's a lot of cheap stuff on here. It, everything about it just feels cheap. The spring wobbles a bunch. This thing doesn't really latch. It's, if you get one, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a lot of cheap things in it. However, when it comes to the head and the spindle, everything in here feels so robust. I have no doubt that this is going to drill very accurate, precise holes even with my dull Forstner bits, it just plowed through that material. So I'm happy with the purchase. I'm not going to return it. This is going to live right here, probably for the next decade or so. If it ever does break, I'm going to be putting that in my description, just like all my other videos. Anytime I do a tool review, look in the description if, this is, if you're seeing this in the future. I will tell you whether or not it breaks. If you have any questions about this drill press, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer everyone's questions, even going on into the future. So thank you all for watching. Catch y'all next time.